a, a massive, solid piece of the Earth's crust. Is this going somewhere, Mr. Creationist? So Mr. Pendleton is not ignoring anything. Oh yes he is. The creationist paid absolutely no attention to the extant dodos, nor did he bother to check the references that they went out to the wave to research and provide. However, you are ignoring the fact that North America is all on the same continental plate. No, actually, the extant dodos are aware of the fact that North America is on the same continental plate. And there has been no superposition. Ah, uh, first, that's superposition, not superposition. Second, I don't know what the creationist thinks superposition is, but just go to the Grand Canyon. You'll see it in action. Of such massive scale on the North American continent. Yet another outright lie. The creationist's personal incredulity on the matter notwithstanding, plate tectonics has evidential support. As you can see from the obvious spreading of the plates. <laughs> this could be classed as a red herring. Isn't it ironic though that the slide made here by the reality denialist actually proves an aspect of plate tectonics and not the Bible? This is what happens when the creationist doesn't bother to check his sources before excitedly posting a video when he hasn't gotten his facts straight first. This is what happens when amateur and evolutionists attempt to debate well-educated creationists. No, this is what happens when amateur and condescending creationists think they are better than sane people and then demonstrate a jaw-dropping ignorance that would make a five-year-old look like a genius to rival Einstein. Anyway, does the creationist think that earthquakes are God's wrath rather than a result of a process of plate tectonics? And again, as you'll note, the creationist made this assertion without providing any evidence. Guess what? About 50% of them are missing. Well, guess what? The missing layers were caused by a period of erosion about 1 billion years long between the two major periods of deposition, one 500 million years ago and the other 1.5 billion years ago. Note that the principle of superposition isn't even violated here. It's just interrupted by erosion. Well, this idea that missing layers is, are due to erosion is ridiculous. Ridiculous? The creationist must not have heard of search engines. Within a few minutes, I managed to find evidence that proves the creationist, once again, to be a liar. Evolutionist claim it's an excuse. That was an instance of projection again. Creationists are the ones who must make excuses, as the apologetics, among many other examples, is evidence. For why the geological column does not match their conception. More projection. Geologists do not make conclusions before they have examined the evidence. That's the difference between creationists and actual scientists. Of the age of the Earth. You see, evolutionists claim that these layers, uh, which are missing in many places all around the world, all over the world. Make a note here, people. The creationist has just declared that there are missing layers in some geological features around the Earth. This is predicted by plate tectonics and is further evidence for the theory. Ironically, the fact that sediment and geological layers are different in many places on Earth is one of the many factors that disprove the creationist mythical flood. Uh, Don't you edit your videos? Or the result of, you know, Erosion is completely absurd because they claim that these layers were laid down over periods of many tens of thousands of years, more often hundreds of thousands of years, and in cases millions of years. The creationist asserts, without explanation or evidence, again, that erosion is absurd because it doesn't fit in with his biblical expectations. We see erosion happening all the time. The creationist would have to deny the evidence of his own eyesight in order to deny this blatantly obvious fact. Now the Grand Canyon is, has numerous, numerous layers. Either a layer is there or it's not there. Oh dear, what this is basically amounts to is another argument from personal incredulity. Erosion can take place on an area such as the Grand Canyon in one time frame, and then superposition can continue taking place in the same area in which the erosion occurred in subsequent time frames. This is such a simple concept that it's frankly amazing that the creationist cannot grasp it. You don't say, there was a layer there, but it was gone because it, uh, you know, it eroded away. So, we see that there was a layer there, but there wasn't. It's just ridiculous. That was an appeal to ridicule, based on a previous argument from personal incredulity. You know, it's just not there, that's all. Uh, the idea that he, you know, erosion took place on an area as massive as the entire Grand Canyon Plain, 
over a period of hundreds of thousands of years is absurd. Once again, just because a simple-minded creationist is unable to grasp such a simple, observable, observed fact doesn't suddenly and magically make it falsified. Especially at the elevations of the central part of North America. It's just a ridiculous excuse. The evidence says otherwise. It is, however, a perfect example of how evolution science is not science at all. Once again, the creationist is telling you a load of absolute bollocks. And what exactly does the change in allelic frequencies in the population over time have to do with the geological process of soil, limestone, shale, clay, granite, and other materials being laid down over time? And it's purely speculation and conjecture. Creation science is purely speculation and conjecture. Kindly do not project the religious doctrine of your biblical inerrancy claims onto actual science. It is dishonest. Presented as fact. They do this, uh, creation of uh, some theories and conjuring scientific information whenever there's a hole in their theory. And they've been doing this with the fossil record of life for over a hundred years. That last segment was yet more lying. The creationist should really be ashamed of himself for denying the existence of hundreds of thousands of fossil entries in the fossil record, all of which are transitional. The DNA evidence, the observations in the lab, the practical applications that we witness every day, and the fact that the overwhelming majority of biologists accept the scientific theory of evolution. There are at least four times as many historians that reject the Holocaust. Species which are extant, meaning they exist today, did not miraculously evolve from other species that are extant. Hmm, not according to evolutionists. What the hell is that slide supposed to demonstrate? The creationist clearly has no understanding of the tree of life. It amounts to yet another argument from personal incredulity. You see, the poster boy of evolution theory, the current one, Stephen Jay Gould, who invented this fantasy of punctuated equilibrium, the creationist has no shame. To explain why there are no transitional forms in the fossil record, no transitional forms? The creationist is telling yet another lie. Which he admitted himself. Here's a link to Stephen Jay Gould in his own words. And almost every major evolutionist mouth and the world has admitted to, including Richard Dawkins. Lie after lie after lie. You think the creationist would be afraid right now for his eternal soul, wouldn't you, given that he has now broken the ninth commandment with such high frequency? It would kind of disagree with you, you know, just there's no evidence of one kind turning into another. Kinds. Seriously, these creationists have never even defined what they think a kind even is. When a real scientist asks what a kind is, they shut right up and change the subject. And the creationist has claimed that real scientists believe that evolution works like a ladder when those very same real scientists have already told creationists this is not the case. Creationists know they're lying. They simply don't care. So yeah, miraculous. Is anyone else finding these appeals to ridicule beginning to wear thin on them now? Would you call miraculous, I call fantasy. And what the creationist calls miraculous, sane people call fantasy. Has anyone else spotted the fact that the creationist missed the extant Dodo's point? Again. This argument is specious at best. Millions of years are not indispensable to evolution. It's simply the amount of time life took to develop. Species change can take place in relatively few generations if selection is sufficiently strong, as proven by man's domestication of the wolf. But speciation is not macroevolution. Let's accept this statement only because the term macroevolution fell out of use when modern genetics discovered that so-called micro and macroevolution are actually one and the same thing. Only creationists still make that distinction. Anyway, speciation is evolution. Period. And therefore it's not evidence of evolution. Here's a heads up for your next video in the film free. Learn what evolution actually entails before you make a video criticizing the theory. Oh, and go find some actual evidence. Speciation is simply variety within the original created kinds. There's that word again. Kinds. Provide an actual definition of what a kind is? No. That would give scientists something that would outright prove the creationists wrong on yet another point. They wouldn't dare. 